Hello and welcome to FT Markets. The topic today are the stock markets around the world. Several years into uh, what has been a pretty good bull market, depending on where you look, things are starting to look a little bit more difficult. Markets are up, but only a little. To help us think about what happens next and where perhaps value might lie, we're joined by Luca Paolini, Chief Strategist for Pictet Asset Management. Hi, Luca. So um, as you can see, the central bankers are with us and are perhaps key to what happens, and I think we'll come to that. But first, um, perhaps you could set the scene for us. Where are we in terms of this big bull market for stocks? And I think you've got a chart to um, help do that here. Yeah, we still believe that global markets are in an uptrend. And the main reason is that the U.S. labor market is still pretty much solid. There is weakness, obviously, in China, but the U.S. labor markets in the past, in the past uh, actually 20 years, are always given the trend. And, and the trend is still up for, for equity markets. But it will be, it will be still very, very volatile. And I think we can see that from this chart here in terms of the labour market. This is, uh, the scale's inverted here on the left, so um, the line moving up means uh, more people have jobs. Yes, and as you can see, for example, in, in 2011, when the, 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 uh, the stock market was kind of fluctuating, well, the trend was still up for the labour market and basically what happened after that and that the equity markets continued to rally. And we expect the same trend. Uh, mm -hmm. in the next uh, 12 months. And this is the dominant trend for global equities, not just the U.S.? Well, we expect actually the U.S. to underperform, but we think that global equities will move higher. There is not much upside, but the trend is still pretty much in place. And in terms of global equities, I think we've got another chart here which sort of gets into some of the outlook there in terms of the earnings. Well, we are now in the earnings season in the U.S., and what we know is that there is no profit growth, really. It's flat uh, or slightly down. And the main reason is obviously energy. And something which uh, we have to be uh, a little bit concerned about is that in the past, whenever we had this kind of flat earnings, well, uh, we had a recession in, in the following year. So I think this is something we have to, to monitor. But again, most of these declines come from the energy sector. So does that mean things are OK as long as we ignore energy? Or um, so, so the energy no, is too I big to ignore? Yeah, that means actually it's too big to ignore. But in a way, the negative now, or the, very, the flat numbers that we see on earnings, maybe exaggerate the kind of the earnings risk that we have in the U.S., but also globally. Okay, so in terms of what you like then, I mean, if the U.S. isn't looking so great, what should we be thinking about in terms of stocks? Definitely European equities and, and also Japanese equities. In a way, Europe has a little bit of everything. You have good valuation. You have now... An and I think we've got a, you can show us that value. An improvement in growth. Yeah. Uh, we have obviously bank liquidity improving. Actually, lending growth is turning positive. And I think what is interesting when you look back in the last 40 years, Europe is trading at pretty much an all-time low relative to the U.S. We see here that we are pretty much back to, to 73, really. So I think obviously part of this is because the euro has been weaker. But clearly the underperformance of Europe uh, makes sense a few years ago. Now with the ECB, with obviously the improvement in earnings, the bank lending improving, is probably going to turn. And we expect European mm. equities to do very well in relative terms over the next six to 12 months. What about the earnings question in Europe, though? Because we've had, I think, it's four or five years now of earnings which have always looked like they were going to grow in Europe, but every year they've disappointed. And um, so are we actually going to get growth in Europe next year? Actually, when we look at earnings growth in Europe, this year will be around 10 or 5 percent if we remove the UK, which is obviously um, negatively impacted by, by the energy prices. But I think there is growth in Europe. When you look at GDP, we're talking about 1.5, 2 percent. But what is really critical is that for the first time now in a few years, we see an improvement in bank lending, which was not the case before. And this is really key for, for bank uh, profits and for, for earnings overall in Europe. Okay. And um, is that a sort of a fundamental call or is that more of a tactical position kind of call on Europe? Well, it's definitely a call for the next six to 12 months. Over the long term, we still see risks, uh, political risks, especially in Europe. But definitely what we see is a turn in the earnings cycle, in the bank lending cycle, valuation and a weak euro. Everything seems to support Europe at least over the next uh, 12 months. And uh, back at the beginning, so Europe is supported by quantitative easing here from Mr. Draghi. But what about Mr. Abe in Japan? We haven't talked about the Japanese market. Um, how are you feeling about that one? Well, Japan, in a way, looks very similar to Europe. We have good valuation, a very expansionary monetary policy. We see, actually, some kind of acceleration in growth and, and bank lending. What is different in Japan is that we see some real structural reform that we don't really see in Europe. 
and we also see, um, especially in Japan, a big inflows into the equity markets from, from, from the retail investor, which will support uh, the market very strongly. So it's a very similar story, but it's probably more longer term than shorter term. In the short term, but in Europe, in the longer term, it's better than Japanese equities. Great. Well, thank you for joining us, Luca. And so it sounds like there are reasons to be optimistic about stocks, even if it doesn't necessarily involve the US.